morning. My name is Professor Andrea Russell, and I'm the Director of Programs here in Chemistry. And over the next about 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about studying a chemistry degree. I'm not going to give you the gory details of every module you'd study in each semester of your degree program should you choose to come here to Southampton. If you want those details, we have the Meet the Chemist Zone, which is in the tea room at the moment. Come on in. Please do. Have a seat. I've just started. No problem. Please have a seat. It's in the tea room, and there um, you'll be able to get much more details. We have a, a stand on uh, the programs, one on projects and placements, one on the student life and experience, and one where you can speak to our admissions tutor if you have detailed questions. But allow me now to just give you a little bit of detail about studying chemistry here at Southampton. So first of all, I'd like to know a little bit about you. So in front of you, you have one of these uh, turning point software um, zappers. And I'd like you to answer this question for me. Everybody, parents, accompanying brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles, random people you brought in off the street. Please answer the question. All right, that looks like about the number of people in the room. OK, here we go. So, oh, great. So for the most part, you're here because you want to study a chemistry degree. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our degree, so hopefully I'll answer those questions. Some of you want to find more about Southampton, hopefully it's specifically about the chemistry department. If you're interested more generally in the university, then I encourage you after visiting chemistry to go over to the main um, courtyard area of the campus and there you'll find additional information. And a few of you are jokers, I think, and you say that you, you're lost and you think this is geography. If it's serious and you're lost and you think it's geography, then you go out the building across the campus and someone will direct you to the right department. But let's get started. So first of all, why should you study a chemistry degree? Well, this is directly from the Royal Society of Chemistry's website. And they say that chemistry is fundamental in addressing many of the key global issues. And they've broken it up into various priority areas, as you can see. So they say, first of all, chemistry is an underpinning science. So we say that chemistry is a central science, which means that chem without chemistry, it's hard to do biology or physics or engineering or medicine or any of the other sciences, because so much depends upon molecules and atoms. Right, so chemistry is the underpinning science, but chemistry also has impact in many of the areas that we're concerned about these days. So for example, energy. My own research is in energy. Chemistry has a role to play there. Food, future cities, human health, lifestyle and recreation, raw materials and feedstocks. I mean, what are we going to do when we run out of oil? Where are we going to get the the fundamental chemical feedstock that we make so many things out of. Water and air. How are we going to continue to preserve clean water? All of these things are very important, but I'd like you to use the zappers again and tell me which two are the most important to you. So please pick two. Okay, here we go. Okay, so human health. This always comes out as a popular one. So what I can tell you is that in each of these areas, I can give you an illustrative example of a member of staff in our chemistry department who's doing cutting edge research in this area. So on human health, I'll give you a couple examples. First of all, we have Professor Malcolm Levitt, whose office is just across the hall. Sadly, he isn't with us today. But he does research on new contrasting agents and new techniques for MRI scanners. So making them more sensitive so that we're able to detect things like brain tumors at a much um, earlier stage. We have Dr. Ali, now Professor Ali Tavasoli, whose office is just in the other building here. And he's working on cancer therapeutic agents and has a large research grant from the Cancer, um, cancer Council, or Cancer Research UK, sorry. So, so that's health and, and uh, human health. Um, in terms of, you see, energy, energy feeds just quite a bit. So in terms of energy, so I've told you that's my research, but I'm a member of the electrochemistry group. So how many of you have a mobile phone with you? Right? All of those have a lithium battery in them these days, a lithium ion battery. Professor John Owen in this department is working on making those batteries better. 
And Dr. Nuria Garcia, one of our newly appointed member staff, she's working on the next generation, not just a lithium battery, but a lithium air battery, so that it works more effectively and lasts longer. Myself, my research in energy has to do with batteries that are much bigger than the ones that would be in your mobile phone. In fact, we're looking at building batteries that are as large as this room or greater. And the idea there is that by using electrochemical storage, we can make um, renewable power work much more effectively. Because wind power is fantastic when the wind's blowing, but what do you do when it's not? What do you do when the wind's blowing too quickly and so that you're making more energy that you can use? With these batteries, we'll be able to store that energy and uh, allow us to use renewables in much greater extent. I could go through each and every one of these areas and give you examples with specific members of staff because we have a very dynamic research department here at Southampton. But you're applying to us as students. So you really, at this stage, what you're interested in is our teaching and learning environment. So let me tell you a little bit about that. We have a high quality, supportive, and inclusive environment, and we have evidence to back that up. So this is from the latest national student survey. It's a 2015 survey, it's just come out. 100% of our students who filled in the survey thought staff were good at explaining things. And 100% said that this course was intellectually stimulating. So that means that we have a really good course, but we're really good at teaching it too. And you need both. We use innovative teaching methods. Not one size is going to fit all, as we say. So when I was a student, which was quite a while ago now, lectures were given by someone writing with chalk on a board, or maybe someone delivering something from an overhead projector. These days, we don't tend to use those techniques so much. What we use are technology to allow our teaching to be better. So here's some examples. So the top left here, this is a lecture in organic chemistry by uh, Professor Richard Brown. And what he's used is a tablet PC here, and that allows him to draw on it and record his lecture as it goes along. And from this year, all of our first and second year lectures are being recorded. And what that allows students to do is to go back and re-watch that bit of a lecture that maybe they didn't understand. I should say this has not affected attendance. Students still attend our lectures, <laughs> right? We take attendance and we want you to be here. But what we want to do is recognize that maybe you didn't understand that the first time we said it. And with video capture these days, you can go back and listen to it again. We use videos as well to support our teaching lab work. So this is a, a video of um, an experiment that a student's going to come do. We have a virtual learning environment. Most students are used to these things these days. Um, ours is called Blackboard, and there we put additional tutorial and homework problems, or if students are having trouble addressing a certain concept, we might put some additional teaching material there. And finally, on the right there, the bit that says cell diagrams, this is one from one of my own lectures, because I teach electrochemistry in the first year. And what I've done here is that all of our lecture handouts are made available to students 48 hours before the lecture. And what that allows the student to do is look ahead and see what they're going to be being lectured on. But it, it also allows me, as the lecturer, to annotate the slides as I go along. So what I've done here is the red is me writing on the slide as, we, as I deliver the lecture. And again, the lecture is videoed so students can go back and watch it again. So we use all of this technology. And finally, you've seen the, the zappers in action yourself. We use these to support our learning as well. So if we're lecturing a very challenging concept, we might add some questions in to check that the students are keeping up with us as we go along. All of it makes it a much more interactive experience than I certainly had as a student quite a few years ago. We have very successful graduates in terms of both the employability and the opportunities that they're given. And there's another survey which is called the Destination for Leavers of Higher Education. Com commonly referred to as the Delhi survey. This is conducted six months after students graduate. So the latest results we have are for 2013. But 95.7% of the students who did their degree six months before then were in full or part-time work or further study at that point. Many of them are in further study. We have a large number of our students go on to do PhDs, um, additional master's courses, law conversion, medicine conversion, things like that. So, and then, if we follow those students further, most of those students, over 95%, go on to have jobs after leaving that further education as well. So we have a very successful group of graduates, and we've supported them through that 
versus through a variety of employability skills training as we go along. So let me tell you about a few of our graduates. So here we have Stephen Price. Stephen did the MChem chemistry degree. That's a four-year degree where you stay here in Southampton and complete a research project. He's then stayed on and did a PhD. He actually did his PhD with me. And he's now working at um, a Diamond Light Source. Do you, if you drive up the, drive up the A34 past um, Oxford? and look on the left-hand side as you're going north and see that big donut-shaped building. It's one of the UK national research facilities, and he's working there. Chris Pearson did the MChem chemistry with six-month placement. He was unemployed by Dexter Laboratories, and then decided to go on and do a PhD, did that at Oxford, and has now moved to another chemical company called Evatech. Ellie Hodges did the MChem chemistry with one-year placement. So she spent her third year out in industry, came back, finished her degree here, and then decided to go on and do a PGCE. And this year, she's now starting her teaching in Winchester. And finally, I'll give you another example of Fiona Thomas, who did the MCAM chemistry, so the same course as Stephen did. And she's she should be, at the end of this year, completing her first year of the graduate scheme with KPMG. So students go on to a variety of things, some directly into chemistry, some into teaching, and others into further industry or consultancy companies. We have a strong reputation for research-led teaching, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the research in a moment. In terms of our community size, I'm just going to scroll through these. We have 49 members of academic staff, and this includes five specialist teaching fellows. So those people have been employed to ensure that the methods that all the professors use in teaching stay up to date and that we have the additional support required to, uh, to address students' learning needs. We're taking on an additional teaching fellow in the next few weeks. We have 66 postdoctoral fellows, so these are people who have finished their PhDs and then do a further period of research. These are people who want to become academics, most likely. Right? And these people come from all over the world to be here at Southampton to do their postdoc experience. We had 160 PhD students last year, why is that important to you as possibly as an undergraduate student? Well, if you're thinking you might want to do a PhD, knowing that we have a large PhD cohort tells you that we're very likely to be able to find you a funded place to do a PhD here at Southampton, should you wish to stay on. And about a third of our PhD students come directly from our undergraduate program. In terms of the undergraduate students, we had 442 last year. You look at the staff-student ratio. Last year, for every one member of staff, there were nine undergraduates, which is a really nice ratio because it means there aren't so many of you that we don't know you. Right? So it's, it's a nice size for a degree program. We have a supportive environment and we care about your welfare. And we do this in a variety of ways. The first thing we do is we have the personal academic tutor system. And almost every UK university will be running something like this. Where it's different here in chemistry is we don't use that to deliver the tutorials of teaching. We use that to support your professional development and to provide you with pastoral care. So you're assigned a mentor, a member of academic staff, when you first arrive, and they'll see you all the way through your degree. You see them to get advice. They're going to be the person who writes the letters of recommendation for you when you go to apply for jobs. And you can go talk to them about confidential things. We run a very successful student parent scheme. So what happens, all of our freshers, the ones that are going to be arriving in about two weeks' time now, they're assigned in groups of about eight to ten of them to two members of the senior class, and then they show them the ropes. So it allows you to settle in much more rapidly in the chemistry department. We care what our students think. So we have a very active set of course reps. Our freshers will be electing theirs very soon, but all the positions are filled for the higher years. And those course reps then serve on our staff student liaison committee, which meets three or four times during the year. And that allows us to get feedback in real time from students about how things are going. What's really nice about our staff student liaison committee is it's not all moaning. In fact, most of it is students coming to say, we really like this, we want more of that, or we've thought of this initiative, could we have this? And then we try to deliver it. So it's a really good group. And then we have the module evaluation surveys. I mean, 
If you've ever attended a professional development course, parents, at the end of it, you're usually asked to fill in a survey to say whether you thought it was any good. We do that with each of our lecture courses. And that allows us to identify the strengths and weaknesses of our staff and further develop them. In terms of developing our staff, we are very pleased to have been awarded an Athena Swan Silver Award. And you'll see this across British universities. And what it is is recognition for the fact that we deal well with diversity. So Athena Swan was originally set up to deal with women in science and making sure that women have good career paths. But it's be being developed further now to develop with all, di all diversity. Finally, as a student, we have enabling services. And this is a specialist group within the university which provides the additional pastoral and academic support that students may need. So for example, if you're dyslexic, they will run the um, screening procedure for you, and then they will help you with a disabled student's allowance to get the support that you need. If you're a student who's studied, suffering from anxiety, they will help to find you an additional mentor and provide that service. They work hand in hand with the department, so it's not just something that students wander in. Academic members of staff can recommend students to enabling services as well. So back to the research. We have world-class research and facilities here with high-quality modern research and teaching labs and an excellent research reputation with recognition for the, our impact and our research environment. So some of the ways that this is recognized is the CHE rankings. This is a German agency which ranks all chemistry and science departments um, in, the, in Europe. And we are in the top 10 in the UK with that at the academic ranking of world universities. And then the REF. Did any of you see the research excellence framework come out just after Christmas? What this is is every department in every university in the UK is ranked against each other in terms of the excellence of the research. It's a horrible big um, administrative procedure. But we came out ranking sixth in the UK in chemistry in terms of research intensity. So this, when we say we're a top 10 department, we mean it and can prove it. We have outstanding analytical facilities. So in this case, we host the EPSRC, that's the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council's National X-ray Crystallography Service. So we have the highest quality crystallography and other analytical techniques. And a real ethos for enterprise. So for example, there have been four successful spin-out companies that have come from this department. And if I just take Illica as an example, they've been floated on the stock exchange. Let's look a little bit at our chemistry degree programs. Many of you will have looked at the website and seen that we offer a variety of programs. The first one is the traditional three-year BSc chemistry degree. This is a program that's ideal for the student who isn't sure exactly what they want to do with their chemistry degree and may want to go outside of chemistry upon graduation. So maybe doing a PGC to go into teaching, maybe you want to go into accounting or other consultancy companies. So that's the BSc degree. Then we offer a variety of the MChem Master's Honors courses. So these are the four-year integrated undergraduate masters. We offer the MChem Chemistry. That's the four-year in-house program where the students stay here for the full four years. But then we have a variety of placement programs. The six-month placement, you go out at the beginning of your fourth year, leaving here in July, coming back at Christmas. And you can do that placement in industry or academia anywhere in the world. So we have students who go to Singapore, Hong Kong, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the US, all over the place. We have the MChem chemistry with one year placement. That's where you take a sandwich year. That third year you go out into industry. During that year you complete some distance learning as well. And then return to us for your fourth year. If you have biological sciences as a strong background in your uh, A-levels, you may be interested in MChem chemistry with medicinal sciences. And this has an emphasis on the medical applications of chemistry, so things like pharmaceuticals. And that's done through your optional modules, but that program also has the six-month placement. And finally, we have the MChem chemistry with maths. So very few uh, chemistry departments around the country now offer this but we still do. We think it's a fantastic program. And students can choose either the statistics or pure maths streams as part of that program. In the last two years, we've relaunched our, M our MSI chemistry and biochemistry 
program. This is a double honors program. It used to be called the double honors chemistry and biochemistry program where students at the end of four years graduated with two BSc degrees. But these days students don't want to spend four years and wind up with a BSc. They want to spend four years and wind up with a masters. So we've taken that very successful program and revamped it to make it an MSI. If you'd like the details of which modules you would take throughout your studies in these programs, you can find them on the website or you can visit the Meet the Chemist Zone where we've got some paperwork to give you. So we have a single honors programs. All of our programs provide a firm background in uh, theoretical and chem practical chemistry. All of our chemistry programs are accredited by the Royal Society of Chemistry, which means that they provide you for further professional study or career. So it's a very results-oriented degree. You have advanced practical skills and training, and every student will complete a research project. We have those two placement programs that I've briefly told you about, the MCHEM with six-month placement and the MCHEM with one-year placement. These allow you to gain that additional valuable experience. So either an industrial placement where you experience the working world, or a a research placement abroad at another university where you're gaining that life experience. To have to pack up your belongings and move to Singapore for six months and do well in a research environment there, you've gained quite a lot of life experience. So for example here we have Sarah True who did her one-year placement at Novartis Pharmaceuticals and Billy Hale who spent his six-month placement at Caltech researching catalysts for artificial photosynthesis. He's very interesting because he had decided upon looking at the website of Caltech, that he wanted to go work with this very well-known professor in Caltech. He made the approach himself, started the conversation, and then our placements tutor made sure it happened. So for really ambitious students who are willing to go out there and look around the world and decide where they want to go, we can help you do that. And this year we have a student who's on placement at NASA, so in California, and he's doing very well there. But students go to a wide variety of places and if you, as you walk through the corridor here, you'll have seen a large number of companies' logos on the, on the wall. And those are all places that have taken students on placements. And then we have the combined honors programs for those of you who want to carry and develop that second subject throughout your studies. And finally, the four-year integrated master's course, MSci Chemistry and Biochemistry, which provides training in both fields. In terms of employability and opportunity, we want to develop you for your future. So if you look at the QA's benchmark statements for chemistry, there's a lot of skills that are, that are requested of a chemistry degree to, to develop in our students, and we meet all of those requirements. We do that by embedding them throughout the degree course. Other places give you a separate skills module. We've decided that the best way to deliver that is throughout all of your studies. So, we also have specialist extra, extracurricular skills development, so that's through the um, <coughs> careers advisory group. And we provide lots of work experience. For over 23 years, we've been running a very successful um, organic chemistry summer school. So that at the end of the second year, students who love organic chemistry can then apply <coughs> to be on this summer school. They spend four more weeks here with us. And during those four weeks, we have a series of chemical companies who come in and commission that group of students to do some research for them. And then all of the compounds those students have been, ma have been making go back to the chemical company for further testing. So it's a real chance to get to work with industrials in a very interactive way as part of your degree program. We also had the Excel summer placement scheme, so if you want to do research in, say, my research lab for the summer, we should be able to fund that as well. In fact, I had two students working with me this summer. You also, if any of you are interested in teaching, you may want to gain experience by working with students that are not university students. And we have ways for you to participate in outreach activities where you work with students all the way from key stage two up through A level. And if you're serious about being a teacher, you'll want to join the University Undergraduate Ambassadors Scheme and in the third year take the module where you actually go out and do some teaching. And that makes quite a difference on that PGCE application to say, actually, I've had an assessed module where I've done some teaching. So I've taken my 20 minutes. I've told you a little bit about chemistry here at Southampton. And I'd like to now know which of the two elements you think would be the most important in terms of your future. 
Are you interested in a high quality education? Work experience and placements? That important practical experience? Are you interested in the flexibility of the programs? I haven't told you much about that. The research project or skills training? So please pick two. Okay, so high quality education. Well, I can illustrate the quality of our education by reminding you that all of our degree programs are accredited by the Royal Society of Chemistry. We're about to go through the reaccreditation exercise. Everybody has to do that every five years. Our meeting will be on the 3rd of December this year, and we're very confident that we'll continue to be accredited. Um, and then the other one you've chosen is the work experience and placements. And so we have over 30 students who are out on placement right now in the MCAM with six-month placement program and quite a few students who are also out on the year-long placement. Um, we've been running an MCAM with industrial experience pretty much longer than anyone else. So we have generations of students who've gone out on very successful placements. <coughs> so I'd really like to encourage you to put Southampton down as a place that you're going to apply to. Um, through UCAS is how we accept applications. Those of you who've been getting ready for your UCAS applications, have you been writing your personal statements? So how many times have you redrafted that? Probably quite a number by now. If you're applying for medicine or Oxbridge, the deadline is the 15th of October. If you're going to apply not for those, for anything else, the deadline is not until the 15th of January, but your school or college may have different ideas depending upon how they're going to prepare their supporting statements for you. Should you apply, what happens is that our admissions team will look through your application and then if we think you're going to meet our qualifications required to, to enroll in our degree, we'll invite you to attend one of our UCAS visit days. At that day, you'll have much more time to spend individually talking with members of staff and looking around the department in more detail than you will be able to do today. So those UCAS visit days will be between November and March, and we hope that you'll apply, and we'll see you then. So I've taken my 20 minutes. Thank you very much for listening to me. Does anybody have any brief questions that I can answer? Okay. In which case, I wish you all a wonderful day. Hopefully, if you haven't had the tour yet, there are further tours leading from, leaving from the front lobby. If you haven't visited the Meet the Chemist Zone and you want some more details, you go down the hallway and turn left. And thank you very much for attending. <laughs>